Welcome to Voice Rising with Cara Johnstad. Enjoy weekly conversations with leading luminaries, pioneering visionaries, singers, poets, musicians, and sound healers as we explore the profound role our voice plays on the path to self-realization and global enlightenment. The internationally acclaimed singer, composer, author, healer, recording artist, voice expert, creator of Voice Your Essence, and founder of the School of Voice, Kara Johnstadt uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower others. Everything in this world vibrates. Everything has a frequency. A pioneer in the field of voice work and transformational songwriting. Her breakthrough methods are helping thousands of people worldwide fine-tune their body-mind-spirit system and unlock the energetic frequencies of limitless creativity, health, and abundance. Share your voice. Ask your questions. Join in the conversation. Receive life-changing, positive transformation and rise together to create a sound world. And here's your host, Kara Johnstad. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Voice Rising. Today, it is all about living in an interconnected world, our voice and the role it plays in healing the earth. Earth messengers are we. And with me in the studio today is Erin McMorrow, guide, growth coach, artist, and author of the newly released book, Grounded. Welcome, Erin, to Voice Rising. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Erin, you open the lines of your new book, Grounded, and you these are, these are the opening lines. To all the seekers, the healers, and the stewards of the land, may our voices come together to elevate the conversation. So share with us why our voices are so critical in these evolutionary times. Mm, thank you. Yeah, the, the voice about for all of us um, the throat chakra as you know is um is a place of conscious manifestation and we're in these incredible times where we have a lot to do in this world you know we have a lot of work to do in terms of healing the earth and healing with mm-hmm. ourselves and if we have a a blocked throat um and a blocked vibration uh, we're not able to speak our truth and we're not able to in, in many senses not even able to be in our truth i find many people in there healing process right now, just identifying the truth at all. As we see what happened last year in terms of um, these great social changes and these great social movements, there's so much truth bubbling up in the collective. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and I think many of us are finding our truths for the first time. I know my journey that I talk about in the book is um, really coming to start to find my truth in about 2013. And it's this whole personal spiritual journey that was woven out of uh, what I found out about the soil health and climate change in the first place. So that's what I thought I was doing, you know, scientific um, studies, and it turned out to be an unfurling of uh, what I think are the greater truths, which are the the greater stories of the great mother and the great mother metaphor. I think that truth is bubbling up in the collective now. and We're all invited to begin to remember these um, more healthy origin stories and uh, more aligned origin stories that indigenous peoples have been uh, passing on, you know, the wisdom keepers for all of time, where Western mm-hmm. culture has come up with some other stories that are not as aligned and that shows up in the way that we treat the earth. And so I think it all, it all comes together. And for me, it was, um, it was my, that inner truth. And then also learning how to speak about it. There's a big um, piece in there about patriarchy and about um, feeling like a, almost a hand, like a somatic hand around my throat when it was time to come to speak these truths and moving through that with actual literal voice work, you know, literal plant medicine ceremonies and singing and vibration. And I'm still very much, I feel like at the beginning of that path, um, I feel like my, my particular throat was very, very, very shut down. Um, possibly for, you know, for ancestral reasons, for any number of cultural reasons, but it's, uh, it's an ongoing practice. Yeah. Yeah. There is a beautiful passage. Maybe we'll touch on it later in the interview about how you really had a, a, almost you could say an awakening with that, um, with the throat chakra and quite the awareness how how so much energy was held back. And it's a vision that I, I hold for the earth and all the work that I do with voice and opening the voice Mm -hmm. channel that I think Mm -hmm. that you're not alone with that, that many, many of us are 
very blocked in what we express and mm. trusting our intuition and trusting, you know, there's a lot of people, if you think of the beautiful song from John Lennon, Imagine, you know, mm. and, and this is a half a century ago, right, that it was written. And, mm -hmm. and you're like, we don't need to imagine anymore. We've imagined it. We've held mm -hmm. it. We know it's time to move the dreamer or the dream mm -hmm. into manifestation. We, we, mm -hmm. we've, we, we are considered the hippies, the dreamers, the bohemians, the, the free spirits, <laughs> but it's real. It's real. And so your mm -hmm. book is very much about soul and very much about mm -hmm. soil. I love mm -hmm. the connectedness between soil and soul, our connection to the soil and our lives as souls on the earth. And many people, when they're making their green smoothies or when they're grabbing mm -hmm. the groceries, they're aware of maybe the, the vitamins inside, but they're probably still disconnected from that dark, rich, moist soil, right? So mm, why, yeah. why is it so critical that we, in a way, put our feet on solid ground and, and realize that even underneath this ground is this vibrant, alive uh, landscape with microbes and worms and everything that we we've kind of we don't think about that when we're when we're buying that green smoothie that that all mm. of these earthy rot and and you talk a lot about compost you actually inspired mm. me a lot in this book um as an urban dweller uh to start mm. composting right so mm. uh -huh. why is it so important that if we want to heal our bodies, we're in a pandemic, mm -hmm. that we need to also connect deeply with the soil and soul connection. Mm. And it comes from so many directions. What comes to mind when you say compost is the um, the death part of the cycle, actually. And yeah. I talk about this where Western culture has kind of just, it's a blind spot in Western culture. We turn away from death. <clears throat> we mm -hmm. idolize the sun. We turn away from the moon. You know, what we've done, mm -hmm. I, I trace it back into this, this goddess history where, um, you know, again, indigenous peoples all over the world for all of time have had the great mother metaphor. And the, the actual metaphor is like, you know, you part the, you part the, soil you plant the seed you cover the soil and life gestates the seed gestates and then life is born right and so there's a life mm -hmm. death rebirth cycle in all of nature and it exists for humans and th that's where we get reminded that we are part of nature and that's something that western society just hasn't done very well um, we've somehow yeah. separated ourselves out from nature and that's also why we have such a strong fear of death because we don't think of death as transformation whereas nature models mm -hmm. it as there is no waste there is no such thing everything is in cycles everything transforms um in to infinity and so when we can find that kind of peace with the death part of the cycle we i, I believe we can actually heal our souls in that sense where there's more of a, a connected infinite sense of life and death as opposed to a small linear lifetime you know where we um try to do as much as we can in this one lifetime it's a, it's a really i think unusual in the long scale of humanity an unusual way to look at life and death and it and it doesn't yeah. serve us because we actually create something that like trash which is just makes no sense there's no there's actually no waste in nature you know there's no way to escape um what yeah. we don't use and so we could design for example you know compostable everything we could make things out of you know, mushrooms and bamboo and all these things instead of plastic for example right. and that's like a, a simple example but it's also i think the maladies of how we feel with depression and anxiety and, and so many things going on the way we feel inside is because we are this disconnected, you know, it's because we've forgotten the soil. It's because we're terrified of death because we don't have a spiritual connection with nature or with our souls altogether. So it really all fits together is the most beautiful part. That is like the interconnectedness of all things. When you start to let those denied parts, those, that unconscious part um, in, as we know, in healing work, mm -hmm. then we can, then we can start to integrate and become whole, which is what we're doing, I think, on the micro level as individuals and then at the macro level as a collective. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people, they sense that their spirituality, that there is also a religious culture in, for example, mm -hmm. America, but that still is also disconnecting because we are thinking heaven is a paradise and not earth, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like earth is right. where our sinners live and heaven mm -hmm. it's like we're in heaven we're going to have what we desire but this right. 
this line on earth as it is in heaven that is needs to be manifested in a way because you know mm-hmm. with all the shootings mm-hmm. and with all the the raping of the earth and of women and i mean it's just a very very ugly reality in many ways but like you say we are um many people are also waking up and becoming more conscious your lines in the beginning of the book um you write and and it's quite stunning you write in 2050 and as a mother mm. it does make me uh, mm. blink three times the earth's population has risen to over 9.5 billion people mm-hmm. oceans as projected by NOAA scientists uh, way back in 2014 are 70% more corrosive corrosive than they were um you know it continues the shells of small animals are dissolving we we know these shocking we we know the facts since decades we know mm-hmm. them i mean i think that we've all studied in high school at the university we've seen the news we know that there are cities all over the world or places without clean drinking water including cities in michigan i mean we mm-hmm. know that we have massive problems and yet um through this disconnect we are almost paralyzed because it's mm-hmm. painful to see. So what for you would be some steps to actively take part in taking steps towards change? Because I think mm-hmm. a lot of people feel in absolute overwhelm. Mm-hmm. They, they they know yeah. it's happening. They know it's happening and they feel like they have no control and maybe it's better just to drink a coffee and read the newspaper because I can't do anything anyway. And right. how can we come together and unite and say, you know what, every single step is very, very mm-hmm. essential in, at this time. Because mm-hmm. you lay it out. You say, we're here at this time because this is happening, and in the next 10 years, if something doesn't change, basically um, it's looking very dire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's incredibly important to remember that every every bit helps, every every mm, small action, and then also intentionality. I think we underestimate intentionality in Western culture as well. Um, mm. From a spiritual perspective, I think the intention we put behind things <clears throat> has a much larger impact than we realize. We don't think of it that way, but. I, you know, I believe in a, in a live co-creative universe. So that's part of it um, where we mm-hmm. can work with her. We can work with the great mother and mother nature directly. And also mm-hmm. remembering that she heals very quickly, you know, like miraculously when we work with her. And so I think when we start to remember some of these simple things, and again, there's always a micro and a macro. So I think as, as a collective in terms of dealing with the physical outer, like definitely start by focusing on healing nature itself and healing the soil itself. So thinking about that in terms of the food we eat, thinking about that in terms of like how local is our food. And we've heard about some of this, but I think it's more important than, you know, a lot of people have been focusing on emissions and focusing on driving and this part of it. But I feel like that's just, there's been an over-focus on emissions Mm -hmm. and um, not enough focus on the importance of something like our huge industrial food system. I think if we all made small changes there and put a little more intention and awareness there, the whole Mm -hmm. system could change dramatically. And if the American industrial food system changes, it changes the whole world. And so this sort of ripple effect. And then on the micro level, I think it's just is critically important to be doing this inner work, right? I don't think, I think a lot of the mm, focus has been on like, what can we do? Can we recycle? Can we, you know, what can we do in the external? Mm -hmm. And that can become overwhelming, I think, without the inner work as well. So I think there's that, just that like putting your feet on the earth, the actual connecting to mother nature, this, the spiritual element, also healing our bodies. I mean, inside, you know, we're in a pandemic, but in so many of us have um, serious health issues as a collective, we've got some, some serious yes. collective health issues going on. And, and we've seen our, our healthcare system, you know, we know also there are big problems there and we have these sort of tenuous, like large industrial systems that we're relying on for our health, you know, for our well-being. 
being. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if we were to shift collectively, say your neighborhood into, you know, with a, create an urban garden and create a compost pile and create a place for kids to play in the soil, you know, that would be a massive shift. And so I think those things are doable, you know, or even finding out, you know, the farmer's market, finding out where your food is grown, talking to your farmer. Many of us may have heard that, but maybe not followed all the way through with it. And it's like, uh, I think when you start to then also connect with Mother Earth on a spiritual level, then it becomes a conversation and it becomes empowering. You know, it's not like, oh, God, I have to do this because I need to be a better person, you know, and uh, whatever that, you know, there's a different mindset. It's more like, oh, all of these things align together. When we align within ourselves, when we connect to the earth, we are literally healthier, you know, and it helps. um, It helps with inflammation, (laughs) you know, if you put your feet on the earth, things like this. And then, um, and then eating food from new, from more nourished, healthy soil is literally healthier. You know, it's better for our immune systems. It's better for all of our systems. So I think those are the the best places to start. Stick with, you know, the simple things, feet on the earth, taking a few breaths, you know, taking time away from screens just as a, as a practice that's not like shaming ourselves, but as a practice that's like, oh, how do we invite something a little bit more aligned in for five minutes a day, you know? And, uh, and I think, I think we get there that way. And what is so amazing, and this is what I always say to people, it's our conditioning that makes us feel that, we're not allowed to, in a way, take a break from the screen or walk barefoot on the earth or dance down the street. It's it's, it's amazing that we allow ourselves to be uh, conditioned and everything that is healing is free. It's free Mm -hmm. to sing, to hum, to move, to dance. You don't need an expensive fitness studio contract necessarily. You can also simply... Yeah, take off your shoes and 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 dance on the earth, or you can um, tell empowered stories and not buy into toxic stories. You can consciously, um, you know. So these are these are all things that are doable. Um, Aaron, we're going to take a very very short break, and then we're going to come back okay. with more about grounded, your newest book, and how mm-hmm. we can rise to the occasion and support the earth. Thank you. Mm-hmm. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. OM Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. With happy clients all over the world, Kara Johnstad knows that your voice is the missing link to more authenticity, abundance, creativity, and health. An internationally acclaimed voice expert, Kara's breakthrough methods have helped thousands of people successfully heal their voice wounds and extinguish the story of self-doubt and shyness forever. Join in group trainings, attend online sessions, schedule one-on-one time, and invite Kara to work with your organization and community. Get started today. Go to www.karajohnstad.com and receive a special guided meditation designed to fine-tune your inner voice and welcome you on the voice journey. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. 
Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back to Voice Rising. I am your host, Cara Johnstad, and with me in studio is Erin McMorrow, and we are talking about her brand new book entitled Grounded, which is a beautiful journey, I would say, between mm-hmm. between soul and soil, between connecting the dots, uh, what is rich soil have to do even with our own root chakra and with our own mm-hmm. sexuality and with our own sensuality. And then we come to women. I, I found this fascinating, this... Uh, and so true, right? Property, mm-hmm. uh, women is property. We have a lot of pain and shame and darkness, how women are treated. And one of the chapters is literally the cry of all women and how mm-hmm. we feel this with the Me Too movement. There is a unity consciousness coming. Um, mm-hmm. Women's voices have been silenced. And we sense this turning point. I think we saw it also uh, yesterday. There was, uh, in London, people were gathering um, to, yeah, to to be in silence and to raise their voices that this can't go on. So the destruction of the soil and the destruction of the feminine go hand in hand. Can you share with us your own personal healing journey as a woman how when you got more in touch with serving the earth and the climate, that suddenly you realized there's a lot of other transformation going on within your own body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really the big beginning breakthrough when I uh, when I started working with the soil and I started to uh, work. I, I actually helped start an organization called Kiss the Ground several years ago, and um, and we were all we were trying to like save the earth, you know, like air quotes, save mm-hmm. the earth, and it's like kind of aggressive, intense way. And at the same time, I had basically an aligned kind of like spiritual breakdown during that moment. I was trying to like run my life a certain way. I had been in academia for six years. I was in a very mental, heady place, and sort of like competitive place. And and what I turn to was yoga actually and that Mm -hmm. brought me eventually to Bali when I had the kind of a breakdown where it's like okay this way things are going is not working and so I took a sort of a sabbatical and I went to Bali for um, several weeks and and did yoga teacher training and and that was when I started to drop into yin yoga and my teacher was um, particularly uh, the way that she taught was from an energetic perspective and with a lot of focus on yin so there was a lot Mm -hmm. of dropping into very slow um, receiving positions like very long positions and I remember even like people's resistance to yin yoga is funny because I teach it now but um, westerners often are like we're not getting a workout you know (laughs) there's a mentality and it's like that's not the point you know the point is to slow down and to actually breathe and receive and that's when I really first started to get into touch with the yin as a concept you know the yin is again the darkness the receiving elements and the um, and the feminine of the like oceanic uh, water-like emotional Mm -hmm. quality um, that has been uh, like I'd say catastrophically underserved in western culture and there's a flip side of like the we talk about the divine feminine and the divine masculine where I feel like patriarchy is just um what I call it is the like ego inter- externalized collectively. Um, so it's not really like a group of people necessarily um, specifically. It's more of an energy and it's more like a toxic masculinity that has taken over our whole culture. Mm-hmm. And so when we start mm-hmm. to heal that divine feminine inside of us, we also heal the masculine and that showed up in my, uh, my work around creativity and sexuality as well. And along the line, I, I found out, I didn't know, but the, the root, you know, the root archetype, the root chakra ar- archetype is all about security, uh, home, foundation, tribe, identity, and then your your second chakra, your sacral chakra, is about sexuality, creativity, unconscious creativity, um, even money, and that has a feminine um, energy to it, and the root has a masculine energy to it, so the, the root chakra actually helps us root down into the feminine soil, and like with that mm-hmm. mother metaphor that I talked about earlier, it's like rooting down into that mother 
the whole thing comes from this sense of the mother mothering as a metaphor that goes over and over and over again. And of course, it's the womb, you know, it's women in that sense. And I think when um, patriarchy or what, whatever that sort of entity was that kind of took over our culture at about 5,000 years ago, um, that was the first thing to get damaged. And that's where we ended up with private property. And the, the lineage of that is is slavery and genocide and um colonization you know when we run around thinking we can own Mm -hmm. people and land that's what happens and that's what we're all in this uh tremendously quick healing you know i I feel like it's been pushed so far that now uh, the healing is quite a reckoning you know and it's happening in an extreme way um, because it has to because because nature always aligns eventually you know it always corrects Mm -hmm. itself so yeah i feel like i mean i could talk for hours about my (laughs) my journey as a woman but maybe that starts it well, I think it's very important for us to remember uh, collectively because I think it's not only women that have many places where they feel numb and they don't understand right. why. Right. Um, but I also think I was I was talking to a man yesterday. There are many fantastically wonderful men in this world. Mm-hmm. And I think that they don't realize that it's their time also to show up for the mm-hmm. divine feminine and for their own sensitivity and their femininity and their receptivity and their listening mindsets because they also are uh, struggling in mm-hmm. trying to uphold a system which is toxic and which does yeah. not work. It simply doesn't work. And I think, you know, that's what's so difficult is that we, again, are divided male, female or divine, fem- whatever. But the truth mm-hmm. is, like you say in your book, unless we all come together, we're not going to be able to do it um, mm-hmm. divided, right? Because right. the time um, asks us to um, come together. You talk also about the, you know, that there was a time when we honored the the nature and the goddesses and they've basically Mm -hmm. been um can you say this snuffed out i mean they've basically been so repressed and so twisted that it Mm -hmm. feels at least i feel sometimes weird saying oh i'm i I guess i don't feel that weird anymore but you know what i mean it's like oh i'm hugging trees and and Mm -hmm. I, i think there's a beautiful part in the book where you talk about this moment where you had to come out with your truth and talk Mm. about the book. Uh, We touched on it before. And you say, um, if I can, if I can quote here, Mm -hmm. you say, we were all shocked at the bizarre and unmistakable sensations in our throats, a sensation Mm. I can now identify as embodied intergenerational trauma, a somatic Mm -hmm. collective memory of violence and silencing somehow my journey into soil health and climate change had taken me directly to the heart and voice of the matter what mm-hmm. and then and then i wanted to ask you what changed with your ability before were you quieter mm. uh about your inner truths and then you realized after connecting more and embodying more that you could come out more with writing and with speaking Absolutely. Yeah, it was quite a quite a turnaround. I I feel like I had a strong voice in an academic sense when I was in academia, I was trained that way. Um, mm-hmm. But it wasn't necessarily about my truth. And it certainly wasn't about my spiritual truth. And so as, mm-hmm. as I started to have this spiritual awakening, there was a lot of shame around it. Because, you know, mm-hmm. again, I had come out of many, many years of academic training. It's not a place that is um, that is very friendly to the spiritual conversation. I feel like, um, in at least in in my institution, and it, it, and also sort of culturally, it was like the number of places and it pl- it places I ended up in my journey where there was kind of a collective unconscious energy that was like, no, you can't, you can't do that. Like, or you can't say that, or you can't Mm -hmm. um, be that, you know, switching to yoga was a huge, it's like shock, you know, for my Mm -hmm. um, friends and family at the time, because it's also about identity and shedding, shedding identities, you know, like seeds, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. cracking open and open again, and then sort of dying again and and being reborn. Um, As you were saying that conditioning, you know, there was so much conditioning and I have my, my matrilineal line is uh, Chinese and I think it may even go back to Mongolia. I'm, I'm just getting this intuition 
if you mm-hmm. think about like nomadic tribal Mongolian throat singers, right. And the um, connection, yeah. Yeah. deep connection to the earth there, that's still quite alive right now. And, um, and then think about however the patriarchy manifested in China. And I know um, in a line of Asian women, the throat and the speaking is a, is a big thing. It's like not being able to speak up, not being able to mm-hmm. express. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, and singing was a, it was an incredible one. Like I didn't do any sort of singing of any kind until 2018 when when I was in this plant medicine ceremony and I was invited to sing and I couldn't make a peep I couldn't make an ohm like I couldn't Mm -hmm. nothing would come out and what came out was just a bunch of um, weeping and and grief and crying and that took um, that took a long time and I work with a voice coach and she actually said that I have a very unusual or have had I'm getting through most, most of it but a very high level of fear so my whole body would shake like I was like there was a murderer coming after me every mm-hmm. time for literally years practicing you know every single day and that's how much somatic fear is in there so it's like you know think of the witch wound and the actual literal violence it's like yeah there were times in human history not that long ago where um, we might I mean, there's a lot of violence. I mean, not to get too graphic, but hangings, you know, and throat slitting and these awful things um, for women getting attacked for um, their spirituality, for their magic, uh, for their connection to the earth. And again, that goes back to that kind of that toxic private property thing, the thinking that the, the ownership piece, um, where we really just as a collective got way out of alignment for quite some time. And we, we have a tremendous amount of healing to do in that journey. So I'm still in it with everybody else. <laughs> you know, it's a, it is a daily yeah. practice. And I do, I use my voice to soothe, you know, to self-soothe um, and never knew how powerful that was. Literally, like you said, it's free. It's like humming, you know, um, it reduces stress. It, um, it helps calm my entire nervous system, just like the yeah, breath. Yeah. It's like these tools are right there inside of our body, but we have to learn how to use them. Well, I think a lot yeah. of people do, you know, over years, we've always focused on breath, 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 yoga, breath, mm-hmm. breath. And I think, mm-hmm. I mean, now people are becoming really more aware that it is, there is a sound consciousness, there's vibrational mm-hmm. Um, and frequency healing and Mm -hmm. that our when we sing and when we hum this is energetically charged breath so you have you know you have the rhythm behind things that are coding processes Mm -hmm. you and you have the beautiful melodies which are bringing the emotionality to the information right so it's Mm -hmm. it's uh really beautiful and you also talk about in your book which, which a lot of people don't know i mean we have the cervical spine and we have our Mm -hmm. cervix and I thought you might want to know just for fun because you were Mm -hmm. playing in your book with uh matter and mother and you were Mm -hmm. um sharing the word the Sanskrit word for um uh sacral chakra means actually your Mm -hmm. own abode or the the holy Mm -hmm. bone and I don't know if you know this but cervix in German is Muttermund which is the mouth of the mother so I, Mm. I think I think it's a very um yeah it's the mother's mouth and wow. for me cool. as a yeah and for me as a voice coach we know that if you basically take your you know touch your outer ears and draw that as women and draw that line all the way down you're probably going to draw them right over your nipples and then down mm-hmm. to your ovaries you have exactly mm-hmm. the same system of receptivity your your um um, how do you say your tubes, your ear tubes and your ovarian mm-hmm. tubes are the same, right? They're mm. the same size or the same shape. And so it is a very big connection between the root chakra and our fifth chakra, the, the throat chakra. Mm-hmm. And I think this is also why if we go into um, sexuality and, and wounding, why many women after that, after, after they've been hurt in a way, they can't mm-hmm. speak. You know, people right. say, why don't you say something? It's not possible because the body right. shuts down to protect you, right? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. so that was a very, that is a very, for all, everybody out there, um, the book Grounded, it's, it is a fascinating read to allow ourselves to reflect on how easy it is to talk maybe even about dirt, but then mm. we have 
dirty thoughts or we have mm. you know we, you weave in the the sensuality and the sexuality and the shame which is unexpected I, I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting it, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. But but in a way, it's beautiful because while we're reading it, we can tune in and say, "Is that is that truth?" And more often than not, we realize, "Wow, we are disconnected from talking about certain parts of the body, even though they're they're so luscious and beautiful." Right? Mm-hmm. We've been conditioned yeah. to be silent. So, I mean, I thank mm-hmm. you for that. Um, let's talk about interconnection Mm -hmm. and just how important that is. So let's take that big jump, um, Mm -hmm. to go from, um, yeah. Why is it so important to understand the, the interconnection that we have in nature, that that same interconnectedness is what we have inside our bodies. And Mm. And that's the power that we have. Yeah, I actually don't think that was a huge jump. What I see, what I envisioned while you were speaking was that um, mm-hmm. we're talking about that that sacral energy, the sexual energy, and it's creative yeah. energy. It's the creative life force of the universe that runs through everything, right? And so mm-hmm. when you look at nature, then it's like, oh, nature is very sexual, right? <laughs> of course it is. It re- reproduces. Yeah. That's, what, that's how it works. Um, and we forget that. So we can always, there's always this mirror, right? So we can always um, look at how nature behaves. And then if it's not aligned in us, then we probably aren't aligned. So like we're talking about all of this violence and all of this conditioning, uh, I mean, the conditioning goes with the history of violence, right? Those go together and those mm-hmm. somatic memories go together. And, and then we find ourselves locked in, like you were saying. And that's as an individual, that also that leads to things like depression and anxiety and all kinds of maladies and even cancer, all sorts of things. You know, when we, mm-hmm. um, when we have this kind of harm to our body, we're not able to heal it. And then, and there's that exact parallel in nature, um, where everything is connected as well. And this is a, there's a bigger, there's a smaller micro um, interconnectedness of all things. And then a bigger, like we get, this is how we get to the carbon cycle and the notion that, you know, all carbon-based light forms are part of this cycle. That's like the water cycle, but we don't think about it. And so getting back to climate change, it's like we've been focused on emissions, for example, which is actually a really interesting um, kind of sexual metaphor as well that um, my agent and I were talking about, where it's like if you think of um, the male orgasm and uh, emissions, like ejaculation, right? And then you think Mm -hmm. of the female orgasm or, or one of the many forms, it's cyclical. There's more of a cycle. There's a feminine cyclical nature to nature and so there are I mean the metaphors are endless it goes you know round and around but I didn't realize that uh, the carbon cycle until I started to learn about the soil was such a big part of this where it's not just about this linear kind of expulsion of emissions in terms of what is causing climate change it has a lot more to do with them the bigger pieces where it's like we've got the land and the oceans and the atmosphere and there's too much carbon in the atmosphere and in the oceans because the oceans are now absorbing a lot of the carbon and we're, we're releasing it um, from the soil at huge mm-hmm. rates by, by killing this microscopic life in the soil with the way we're doing most of industrial agriculture. And so that's the bigger picture of climate change is actually a, a cyclical. It's a cycle. We've upset right. the cycles of nature, which is not, you know, doesn't work for us as a species. Um, so you have to kind of scale back that way, but it comes all the way down to the tiny microscopic, you know, the cells in our bodies and the microscopic life in the soil. You know, these tiny little, the tiniest of tinies are actually the most important part of this giant cycle that is, you know, that determines kind of whether or not we can inhabit this earth safely. So all of those things are connected. I found that that was kind of where I started. Um, and then you get the interconnectedness in a spiritual sense and that we are all connected. We are all part of nature. Every cell in our body literally is part of this. And then also we talk about that creative life force running through everything where it's running through us. It's running through our sexual nature. It's running through our bodies. We are, we forget often that we are embodied. You know, I think you, you probably have a lot of this in voice work um, where it's, it is, again, it's the, the material world that has been like denigrated for so long that we deny our own bodies. We deny our own existence. Like that's a root chakra um, harm. Yeah. And so healing that is to like, to be in our bodies, to be on the earth, you know, to take, take up space to be present and to know that it's our birthright to, to heal these things as well. We can use literally our voices, like you were saying, and put our feet on the earth. And so 
I mean, again, that goes on and on. You can take it in every direction, but um, that's kind of how I see the interconnectedness of all things. Beautiful, Erin. We're going to take a very, very small station break, and then we're going to be okay. back with more. All right. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Life is a flow, and enlightenment is simply harmonizing with the way life really is. Then you find that life is effortless, benevolent, and free of all suffering. Hey everyone, this is G.P. Walsh, and I want to invite you to my brand new radio show that's launching right here on Home Times Radio called The Flow of Enlightenment. I've been a spiritual teacher for decades, and my greatest pleasure is being able to share with you these deep and highly practical spiritual ideas. So join me in The Flow every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, and let yourself be transformed. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. At the Equal Justice Initiative, we believe mass incarceration has to end. There is this presumption of dangerousness and guilt that gets assigned to black and brown people. We have to confront our history of racial injustice and commit to a new era of truth. There's something better waiting for us, something that feels more like freedom. Truth can inspire change. Please learn more at EJI.org. Welcome back to Voice Rising. I am your host, Cara Johnstad, and with me in studio is Erin McMorrow, and she just brought out a new book entitled Grounded, which is a beautiful journey, a love affair between soil and soul, a soulful soil. (laughs) Soil is not a soil. (laughs) Love affair. Um, We were talking about carbon, which I love it because most people have heard the word, but they have no idea why it's uh, so important. Um, they have no, absolutely no idea. So how, why is it so miraculous and how do we get the carbon back into the soil? You mentioned that quickly. Everyone's working on emissions mm-hmm. and lowering emissions, mm-hmm. but how do we actually get carbon back into the soil? And why is that so important? Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the miraculous nature of plants <laughs> that um, I discovered in this, in this wacky journey um, that plants actually naturally bring the, uh, excuse me, the carbon out of the atmosphere. They need it. They like it. So they bring it into their, let's call it their bodies. I try to do this on like a kindergarten level um, to mm-hmm. make it a little bit cartoon like. So they kind of like suck in the carbon and the soil loves the carbon and the microscopic life in the soil loves the carbon. And so it comes down through the plant, through the plant roots. And then there's something um, called mycorrhizal fungi, which is this like middleman uh, fungus, which is a really fun thing to get into. It's in the book as well. Um, that helps the plant through the roots, like attaching through the roots to barter with this teeming ecosystem of life under the soil. And this is how nature works. Like this is happening all the time. If you imagine like the deep, dark, rich soil in the forest floor in Oregon, for example, or something like Mm -hmm. that. Um, It's like that composting thing is always naturally happening. That's just what nature does. And so when you think about rich, healthy soil, it's dark, right? Because, because the carbon is there and, um, when that ecosystem is functioning properly, it also helps the soil store water and clean water and um, creates, there are all these like magnificent things that happen where there's more um, air and like aeration in the soil and everything works together the way it's supposed to. Now, when we, um, when we upset that system, when we overtill, when we um, cut up the mycorrhizal fungi or or kill it in various ways and we kill it with pesticides um, and we kill the other microscopic life with pesticides, we have been trying to replace uh, nutrients and things like this with synthetic replacements rather than letting mm-hmm. nature do its thing. Um, but we actually lose that. We lose, it works in the other direction if we don't take care of that microscopic life. So then that's how mm-hmm. we're losing all of this carbon out into the atmosphere and then back into the oceans. Um, 
tipping the balance all out of whack. And so everything that we can do to help give back to that soil, whether it's on the micro level of compost, that's where compost comes in, where compost is um, organic matter that is meant to go back, like like the forest floor, right? Leaves and things. Mm -hmm. And also our food waste and things. So the fact that food ever ends up in the what we call the trash, I'm air quoting the trash. There's no such thing as trash. You know, we're just moving stuff around. Um, but if we separate that and like have a green bin for example or have a compost pile or bin or whatever in our yard if we have that um all of that organic matter goes back and goes back to feed the soil so we're giving back to mother nature the carbon is coming back down and then of course it goes to the scale of you know like the amazon or like these bigger like repairing larger um ecosystems like much larger you know the size of um California and things like this, where everything that goes back into healing the land, healing ecosystems, putting things back into our gardens, um, composting, urban composting is, is another piece. There are actually a lot of uh, small compost uh, systems that you can just kind of Google and see where you live. If you don't know where you can compost, you may have mm -hmm. a green mm -hmm. bin or a system at your like farmer's market where you can go drop off your, your clippings or whatever, your food waste, and then pick up your new vegetables. And it also, uh, my agent is actually in New York, and she started doing this after reading my book, and she realized that she then didn't have stinky food waste in her garbage, which is a big deal in New York, you know? Um, yeah, and in general, big, like, I haven't had, yeah. yeah. So go ahead. And the New Yorkers <laughs> don't have it on the street, because if anybody's ever been to New right. York, when they're going to pick up the garbage, they literally have bags of garbage sitting on the sidewalk yeah. before the garbage right. men come and pick it up. And it's, uh, it's phenomenal. I've, I've never seen it in another city mm -hmm. except in New York city. Um, what are three simple steps that people can take if they don't have a garden, if they're not living, uh, you know, in the countryside, how can mm -hmm. they, how can they make an impact? How can they change? If they're city I would start. Yeah, city dwellers, um, start with your food. So if there's any way to support, uh, most cities have an extensive network of um, farmer's markets. So that's a pretty easy one and an enjoyable one. And then even within those farmer's markets, if you can get to know your farmer or find out, mm -hmm. um, you know, how they're tending their soil. And I would say even asking, I mean, this can be only when it when it serves, but um, asking at restaurants and things like that, where the where the food is coming from, um, can it just helps spread this awareness i would say also just spreading spreading the word you know once you start um paying attention to where your food is coming from spread the word to other people and then and then compost like i said whether it's um a green bin in a city there's always a way and it could be uh community gardens will be a good place to compost people yeah. people that are gardening want your compost they want your organic matter so you just have to find them um but normally it's pretty simple like i've had friends look up in orange county or in different places la has green bins um yeah i think that's the best uh, and way then to go. you put you you if you don't have the ability to go every day you can just pop the scraps from your cooking into a freezer bag or into mm -hmm. a bag and then just drop it off exactly once week, yeah once every yeah. couple of days um it's amazing <laughs> it is amazing it is very amazing and we just started a community garden here in the community of berlin so that's also very Ooh. amazing because you see a wow. lot of kids learning how to garden and i mm. grew up in the countryside but to tell you the truth after you know, almost 30 years living in a city, I've forgotten a lot too. So it feels very mm. good to get back uh, to the roots. Erin, um, mm. we've all been, I mean, I think you, you, you talk about this a lot in the book too. This, we, we know this kind of um, love and fear and love and mm. fear. And we have been running a lot on fear. There is a lot of fear based information running through our news. We don't see very mm. much about people composting and creating community <laughs> gardens as much as we see glaciers falling into the ocean and school shootings and everything else. Mm. Through this fear, we've forgotten who we are. Mm. Where would you like to see our world be in the next six months or in a year from now? Mm. Yeah, thank you. I, I I, just, I see this vision of regeneration that is um, that's total. So it's again, it's macro, micro. It's 
um, individuals sort of waking up, uh, for lack of a better term, and coming back to life in the sense of um, letting go of some of this conditioning, entering a healing space to, um, even if it's just a little bit of meditation, you know, shifting that paradigm, um, focusing on the constructive. So I would recommend actually two documentaries. One is called Kiss the Ground and the other one is called Gather. Um, if you want to sort of, again, like the media that we're taking, like focus in on what's possible, like see, you know, some some visuals and examples and healing with indigenous peoples and lands, I think is, is probably up there with um, the most important things that we need to do is get back into this conversation um, because we do, we talk about the regenerative agriculture movement, but, um, but it's limited in a sense. It doesn't have uh, a spiritual perspective, which indigenous peoples have obviously always had. And so there's a remembering, it's not just like a, an achieving something We're we're remembering we're going home. And so I think this vision of healing with indigenous peoples and lands, um, healing, empowering women and girls with um, education and reproductive rights all over the world, um, but at a small scale in the next six months, just like people starting to meditate a little bit more, put their feet on the earth a little bit more, remember a little bit more, compost a little bit more, get into the garden. And and some people actually get um, just like pop open when they hear this story and they like quit their jobs and devote themselves to <laughs> healing with Mother Earth. I've seen it many times. Um, and it's spectacular because I see these people like exiting their tech job that they weren't happy in, you know, for years mm -hmm. and putting their mm -hmm. time and resources into fully into farming. And maybe I have a friend who's like maybe... Um, working in the space of like a, the app space that could be uh, related to regenerative agriculture, this sort of healing, this kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? This problem solving that like, there's no one turnkey answer, but as people um, start to remember in small steps, they suddenly can use whatever was already going on in their life to um, devote themselves to mother earth somehow. And I think that's how all of these problems are going to be solved. That's how someone's going to invent this like, mushroom based plastic bag that's not a plastic bag it's a mushroom bag you know something like this um i think yeah, there are yeah. many 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 things that can pop up very quickly in the next you know six months and few years well we have we know through quantum physics that it's sometimes or the i think it's called the 100 monkey theory right it's mm -hmm. suddenly like you yep. have a lot of people doing things but it's not connected and as soon as it's connected you make this global brain and this global heart and mm -hmm. suddenly it just um, expands it's exponential um, yep. which brings me I guess uh, to collective intention um, if we're talking about quantum mm -hmm. physics intention mm -hmm. is also a frequency of voice work it is mm -hmm. uh, you you have a quote from Greg um, I don't know if he says read in German you say to ride but Greg mm -hmm. read I'm assuming a dream written down with a date becomes a goal a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan and a plan backed by action makes your dreams come true which kind of mm -hmm. weaves back into this idea of everyone's saying it's a dream and imagine mm -hmm. all the people living mm -hmm. like this but in order to bring that dream onto the earth we do have to put our feet onto solid ground and mm. and and do the work right and mm -hmm. and and compost and dig and learn and um so what is your intention that you are setting with integrity for your mm. steps forward mm. It's an interesting question because everything, all of my intention for seven years has been to birth this book and I just did mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so it just yeah. happened. So there's this blank space now. It's like, okay, I, I desire to actually return to the land. So I've been living, I actually just moved and I'm in between. And so I don't know how this is going to look, but I don't know if it's a cabin or whatever, but to get mm -hmm. actually closer and to be doing more um, actual farming and gardening where I live. And, um, and then sticking to my practices, my, my vocal practice is incredibly important mm -hmm. to me. And mm -hmm. during the first three months of the pandemic, I was, um, I had like a three hour long morning practice, you know, with vocal practices and the sound bowl and these things. So getting back into that, um, cause birthing the book did disrupt a lot of my practices. <laughs> and so I'm, you know, mm -hmm. back to taking my own medicine, um, putting my feet on the ground every day, working with my voice, um, sharing creatively in this sense 
and it's sort of, it's wide open. So it's really just continuing to tell the story is my work, continuing to work in the healing fields um, where people come to me and I'm, I'm basically coaching and guiding and helping them have breakthroughs. That's really, um, it's really rewarding helping people work through the kind of things that you, that you and I were talking about, these, the somatic yeah. healing um, and helping people mindset work, even helping people shed their conditioning. Um, I'm also going to re- re-release my online course. And so there'll be a more accessible um, way for people to enter this subject matter and practice and have practices. So yeah. that's, what I, that's what I think it looks like to me. It's like get back to the land, continue on with my practices, continue working with people and continue telling the story. I think, I think that's it. <laughs> oh, and that's a lot. And I, as, as a, as an artist, someone who's birthed a lot of uh, mm-hmm. music and as a mother, and I think that after we give birth to um, creation, it's natural mm-hmm. to have a, a receptive, empty space in a way, which mm-hmm. is like a, a beautiful vessel. So um, I, I'm sure that many wonderful inspirations will come to you. Let let me uh, share with our audience where they can get in touch with you for coaching and for your courses and and uh, maybe you even have your book on your homepage. Do you have a homepage? I do. Yeah, it's easy to find me because it's just my name, but my, my website is erinmcmorrow.com. And so mm-hmm. everything is there. And then I'm also pretty active on Instagram. So it's doctor.erinmcmorrow. And you can, the two link to each other. So really you can Google me and it, it should pop right up. It's pretty easy to find me. Right. Beautiful. Well, mm-hmm. McMorrow rhymes with tomorrow. We hope that we're going to yeah. have many better tomorrows, even though we love the power. Thank you so much for being on the Thank show with so me, Erin. Yeah. Oh, it was a joy. Thank you. <laughs> I wish you all the best, much success, and continue your amazing work for the Earth mm-hmm. and also for Mother Earth and for women. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. The sun is falling